The following presentation is a gift from the team at Streamline Publishing, publishers of Fine Art Connoisseur, Plain Air Magazine, and weekly newsletters Fine Art Today, Realism Today, Plain Air Today, and American Watercolor, and events the Plain Air Convention and the Figurative Art Convention. We offer over 400 different art instruction tutorials and ultra high quality video by the world's leading artists. If you like what you see, help us support our artists and our team with your purchase. Each video aired has a special discount code for today only in the comments section with a link to the video offered. And to see everything we do, or if you want to receive notice of new releases, new products, and new events for artists, simply click the other link, which says, see everything we do. Thank you. Hi, I'm Eric Rhodes, publisher of Fine Art Connoisseur and Plen Air Magazines. Thanks for being with us today. We have a really special treat. One of the great Chinese masters, Jov Wang, is going to teach you essential drawing skills. Now, Jov Wang draws differently than anyone I've ever seen. He teaches some concepts that I never before knew. And I think if those are in this segment, you're going to be blown away. Anyway, enjoy this video. My name is Jov Wayne. I'm going to draw a male head today. Before I start, I want you to make your observation that this is a male model. The tool I'm going to use today are the pencils. Most most of the time, I'm using 6B, 4B, 2B, and HB. I use erasers like this. I cut the eraser into half sideways. I make this shape them like this because I consider the eraser on the pointed side is a, another pencil. You are going to see why I start to do that. This is the, the eraser, another eraser. I'm going to show you some of interesting technique that you can use with this. Now, about the paper, I'm only using single paper against the drawing board. The purpose is I'm going to show the strength of my pencil against the drawing board, which is going to show a hard brush stroke. Therefore, you do not want to have your whole book of drawing papers on behind it, so it needs to be a single page only, because a whole book is going to soften your brush strokes. Also, when I apply the eraser brush strokes, then it doesn't show the strength of that stroke. These are the brief introduction as well as how I use them and those tools I use. Okay, let's go ahead.
So far, I have started my first stage of drawing. What I have done is I want to have a good observation of the model. What am I looking for? I'm looking at his motion, how his dynamic appears to me. I was freshly in search of the movement. I started with straight lines, as you see here, and that stands for the rhythmic lines as the dynamic of it. While I was drawing the straight line to show the rhythmic lines, I was also in search of the perspective lines. In the meantime, I was so careful, I was considering about what the size of the head. Regardless of drawing or painting, always in your mind, you never want to draw larger than life. You also don't want to draw them too small according to the ratio of your paper. I always ask students to pay attention to how the proportion of your head is versus the paper. Then I'm asked, could I place the head right in center? My answer, yes. Under what condition? Only when you are showing your dynamic and variety of variation of the, the pose and uh, you show the rhythmic lines surrounding the head and it is good. Because those lines surrounding the head has a function that breaks up the center and then it makes a uneven spaces in the space, so it's okay. When I started, normally I would use the softer pencil, both 4B and 5B I have started today. Why softer pencil? Because you know the other two harder pencils are going to be able to show the, the hardness and showing the power and the strength of your brush stroke. Because if you started with harder pencil, later on you use a softer pencil, you cannot draw on top of that. This is a method that I want you to be aware. As you see, I started with the rhythmic lines. I started also with the perspective. So I was starting by sculpting the structure and the form. I started with the dark, and then I, secondly, I go move on to the gray area. The unpainted area is considered, therefore I simplify the value and it's clearly divided into three values as well as showing the structure and form at the same time. And also clearly depict the dynamic pose and its rhythm. I use a lot of eraser. This is my technique. As I said earlier, the eraser show that you, I use sideways to show a different result. I can use the sideways also to depict a plane. Ah, 就像我们的雕塑. As if these are the clays that you are adding that on to a sculpture. This is a very important part in my drawing. That's why you can see that I already shown a very clear depiction of the structure and form even at the first stage. I am then going to continue to my second stage. There is a book I strongly recommend. It is um, called Bridgman's um, Drawing. That book has comprehensive um, illustration about it. During my workshop, I ask all the students, both intermediate or beginners, they need to have that book next to them. Find from the book the relevant information and then bring up your notebook and then start 
to follow the model and then find out the relative perspective or structure or form. What if you could paint like a master artist? What if you could study with one of the world's most successful Chinese masters, whose work occupies museums and some of the best art collections in the world? Now you can learn portrait painting and drawing with two exciting and all new instructional videos with master artist Jove Wang. These exclusive videos give you the rare opportunity to learn from a world-renowned master artist as he demonstrates the powerful techniques he uses to bring any subject to life. This is a drawing sketch and color sketch. Color sketch is for the purpose of the value, the temperature, warm versus cool, and also its local skin tone. In the first video, Painting Expressive Portraits, Jove Wang teaches you his method to capturing the raw emotion and humanity of your subject in oil. He'll show you how to establish value and rhythm in your composition, how to capture the unique energy and personality of your subject, the secret to using texture to add depth and emotion to your paintings, and how you can make dynamic painterly portraits that reflect the personality of the sitter, and so much more. In the second training video, Essential Drawing Skills, Jove teaches you how to draw vivid and lifelike portraits in pencil. You'll learn valuable insights about the anatomy of the face and head, how to find your perspective lines. Yes, many portrait artists don't even know the importance of perspective in drawing the face. This tip alone will change everything. How to use special tools to soften and adjust features as you move through each stage of your composition. Jove demonstrates how to use subtle expressive lines to bring facial expressions to life. How to search for movement and use straight lines to create a sense of rhythm in your work. And how to avoid the most common mistakes that both beginners and advanced artists make when drawing. For an artist, drawing is the critical foundation of everything you do. If you've always wanted to learn how to draw and paint captivating portraits that are both realistic and expressive, then these training videos were created especially for you. Painting expressive portraits and essential drawing skills with Job Wang are now available on DVD or digital download. Order yours today. Painting expressive portraits and essential drawing skills with Job Wang. Well, that was Master Jove Wang, Essential Drawing Skills, and you can learn more about it at lilyartvideo.com. Remember, today only, there's a special discount code in the comments section. Now, let's get right to our interview with Jove Wang. Sao Chan Hao, good morning. I'm Eric Rhodes, and today we're here with Jove Wang. And Jove, welcome. Zhao good morning. Good morning. Uh, today is a little bit unique because we have a translator who is off camera. So we're going to ask the questions. Jove understands a lot of English and speaks some English, but we're going to have a translator just to make sure. So uh, welcome to the translator. Good morning. Good morning to you, Eric. All right. So. Um, um, could you tell us the story of when you first started doing art? Ever since I was a child at the age of five, six, I'm so fond of painting and drawing from the wall, on the ground, or even at the park, and my family supports me. I utilize the sticks, wooden sticks, and draw on the ground because we have a shortage of paper. Of course, that was child's craft, or sometimes I would say it's similar to witchcraft. It doesn't have a distinct shape, but it's rather abstract. And it's weird, but it's fun. Hmm. 
So there was a shortage of paper. Uh, was this uh, true for all people? Was your family uh, poor? Your, your father worked in a factory, I remember you telling me. My family, in fact, was privileged. My father is a plant manager, mother is a doctor, so we are endowed with certain richness that we are free in doing so, but paper, in fact, is a, something that is in shortage, that's a fact. But we are under the influence of Russian culture as well as art very, very sufficiently. So were you, um, were you part of the cultural revolution or did that happen before you started in art? I was about six, seven or eight of age when we had cultural revolution. My father, my father was victimized. Mother was strolling on the street and I was one of the victims. Overnight, family ruined. My mother got crazy. I witnessed my mother at the age of six. She was walking across the street, throwing the stones at my mother or me. It is such a drastic change in my life at that time. Factories, war, they have all these uh, writings of criticism. It is such a memory that I can never erase. So uh, that must have been very painful. Was this because you were a privileged family and, and these were other Chinese that were throwing these stones? Criticism as well as cultural revolution, we are categorized as those capitalism. The school, they let children go, no more schoolings, because whoever are knowledgeable, they are the victims. The professors and teachers, they are all um, bad guys. As of today, I always remember what my father told me. Whenever, wherever you are, you need to be knowledgeable. You need to pursue something of your dream in your life. Do not follow the tracks what other people are doing. In that environment, there is no chance for me to learn something apart from painting on my own. I painted on the cups, pots and pans in the house, even vegetables, cows, and I painted them as subjects as well. You painted on cows? Oh, no. <laughs> no, I didn't paint on them. <laughs> um, and, and so were you taken out of school at a young age? At that time. And what age were you at that time? Around six, seven, eight. Um, Americans don't really understand what people went through at that time and, uh, and how that all happened. It's all the political turmoil. You, you were painting at home on your own, and then you eventually found an art instructor, I think you said through someone who worked with your father. In my childhood, or I should say for my career, I'm all indebted to my initiating instructor. His name is Gu Gang, and he, in the Chinese art society, I would say that he is one of the masters that has the Western or Russian art in him. Because my father is a plan manager for that factory that is collaborated by Russian government in northeastern province. He is a worker, but he is a painter as well. So my father is in charge of the plant. Um, they need to make posters, poster signs as well, for propaganda, including words and paintings. And we call that union. And the union needs a person at a studio as well. Therefore, my father set up a studio 
for that propaganda as well as a studio for him. I recall is of today that is such a nice studio he has been built with. In my memory, it is exactly a master studio. It has a old rugged sofa and with draperies, and I believe that is some of the tools that he will need for painting. Therefore, I envision I would want to have a studio like that in my life. I often went there. He doesn't. He didn't allow me to watch, but I peeped through that this one slit in the door to see what he is doing, and I was so admiring at him. My memory remains so fresh as of today. Of course, then I had some French benefit from him. He gave me some papers to paint and some paintings, a、uh, paints. But he never taught me. He only told me, "Jov, bring this back home. Paint something from your subjects at home, like your pots and paints, or so far as whatever you can." Now I understand. He didn't teach me with a purpose, because to a child at that age, it's not important to teach, but it's an environment he provides and a kind of vision that he has given to me. As of today, I still myself my sentiment still emerge in that feeling. Your idea, your concept, all this. Are, I think I'm inherited from him so immensely, and that's how I felt for、did、my you, childhood. Did you,、uh, when you built your studio in China or in America, did you use anything from your memory of his studio to create your own studio? My Jilin studio in China—it's a dream come true for me. I bought the land. I built on my own. The studio is a mix between Chinese and Russian culture, whereas in America it's a, just a studio. You were inspired by Gauguin, and then you ended up getting into art school. When did that happen? How did you make that transition from being a little boy who was painting to getting into art school?、Uh, Gauguin has fulfilled my dream or cherry, provide me a a dream that I wish to become an artist. Therefore, in my youth, I graduated. I just was admitted to a Chinese art school. My understanding is that the Chinese art school was very hard to get into.、Um, how did you get in? Was it a difficult process, or had they seen your art and welcomed you in? Ah, 当时考进吉林市业余美术学校，它是一个很专业性的。I was trained at a very special arts high school in Jilin for both junior and high school. That we were trained heavily on、um, sculpting. And、uh, drawing on sculpture as well as painting, therefore I was ad admitted later on to the university. Then I graduated at the age of、um, at the year of 1982, and then I started to work in a printing factory. It's a governmental one. You went to、uh, a high school for artists. So that's very much like the Russian tradition, because they have an art school in Russia, in Moscow, that was from the age of seven all the way through high school. It, is it similar to what they have in China? Yes, exactly. It's very restrict and very, very, very highly、um, academic and very well training. Yes, exactly. I have to paint every day around twelve to fifteen hours a day in drawing. It, <clears throat> at the at the high school in in Moscow that I visited,、um, I watched seven year olds doing drawing from live nudes,、uh, and by the time they were at graduating age, 
uh, 12th grade, I, I assume, they were incredible artists. They were better than most of the artists in America. Most of the, the best artists, they were better by that stage. And yet only a small percentage of them were accepted into the next level of school. Was that similar in your case? We didn't start it at seven, but at the, around the age of 13, we did start it to draw our model. So then you next step was to get into the the college of art is that correct after the printing from a short training by the government then i was later on admitted to the university that same year that same year my father died and it signified that there is a drastic change in the whole family and because of that I am determined that I want to be admitted to the best um, art school in China. Therefore, I strive my best in order to enter the art school. During daytime, I work in the printing firm, but at nighttime, I studied myself hard. So for the next two years, I studied so hard as well as working hard. So in 1984, I applied for five art schools in China. Five best art schools I applied. I was all admitted. Then I chose the Chinese um, Academy of Fine Arts in Hangzhou. When I had an interview with them, they orally already said I was admitted. Of course, I was overwhelmed. That was 1984. What was the process like in school? Uh, did they take you through more of the same of what you did in the, in the lower school? Did you do more cast drawing or um, copying of masters or drawing from life? What, what was the process and how long were you in the school? I was admitted in the Department of Design instead of the oil painting because I knew oil painting is the hardest one to be ad admitted, so I applied for the design department. But very luckily, I was juried and getting the highest points for my drawing among all the students. I asked the, the head of department, why was I juried in? How did you make? A decision that I got the highest score. He said, your drawing is different from others. Your drawing is so powerful. Nowadays, I am leading the workshop in drawing as well as painting. I have to make such conclusion that the earth, the water, the gray, the, the clay, all this make up me as of today. The dark earth of the North is province and the cold weather, they are part formation of my personality. Just like how you try to understand the Russian art and Russian paintings. Russian art has its feature, it's so earthly, it's full of ground and full of the, the, the down to earth. I also believe that's part of the result why they chose me and put me as a highest score for the drawing. You copied Russian paintings, Repin and Serkov and so on, is that correct? Very rare. Well, maybe it was, you were telling me your teacher was... Oh, yes. My teacher practiced art by copying those Russian masters. He was jury in, admitted as the highest master's degree graduates. So, because of his copying and his mastering of the Russian works. At his younger age, I would think his works are so great. Yes, I recall that. Well, that inspired you to paint very much like the Russians paint. Uh, there were a lot of styles that you could have chosen, and I'm sure there were a lot of styles taught at the university, uh, yet what is it about the Russian painting style that um, 
that spoke to your heart. You are exactly right. So much of inspiration he has given to me that is still, as of today, influenced me. As I said, I'm not a major for oil painter department, but they are all as a descending from Gu Gang's art to me, as well as the Russian culture that is coming along, which is a legacy that gives me innovation for my own art as well as teaching in my workshop. In the Russian tradition, part of the academic training was plein air painting. The Russians who attended the academy, the Sarakov Institute or the Repin Institute, uh, had to spend three months a year minimum painting plein air. Was that part of the training in China? Um, I believe you told me you did plein air painting as a little boy. Yes, certainly. I still remember while in my youth, I was with my friend. We were taking a small push-up box and we were painting in a very cold weather in the Songhua River. And I was wearing very heavy cotton gloves, and we were doing something like each sketch for half to one hour, about the size of six by eight inches. And also wearing a Russian cotton hat. Those trails already with two icy icicles. <laughs> Frosted fronds and uh, eyebrows. And we continue painting with my friends. Lunch break with the Chinese bread that we brought each person, and then we continue. And uh, we only take it as granted because there is no exception. We need the training. Particularly in the northeastern, very cold weather. Well, in my youth, I saw that was fun, but now I recall that is a very severe, very heavy training. And after class, each day, I will bring my note sketchbook to the train station. One book will be full when I come back home. Particularly those waiting rooms in the train station, you can see people crowded and with sex and very old clothes, as you can see from the Russian paintings. Every day I came back with a full sketch note. I now understand those trainings in my past which is so significant to my art today. Those are the price I paid and uh, I am harvesting now. The Russians told me when I visited a couple of, I've been to Russia a couple of times, uh, they told me two things that they thought were very important in study. One is sketch all the time. Always have a sketch pad in your pocket and sketch at every minute of every day, just constantly sketch to improve your drawing skills. The second thing they said is plein air painting is very important because even if you're a portrait artist, because it helps you see light and color and shape and value, uh, and that it's essential for all artists to be able to go outdoors and paint. Do you, do you believe that as well? Yes. Yes. So, what happened after school? You, you finished at the art school, what came next? Ever since of my graduation, I was assigned by the government to work in the International Expo Design. 
I led the design for interior of the Chinese Expo in Spain, Caribbean. However, I realized later on that my major in design and the works I did before really give me another inference in my artistic career because it provides me a modern concept. So, um, after the Expo, is that when you came to America? Yeah. Yes, 1990, I immigrated to America. What was that like? Was it difficult to leave China? And why did you decide to leave China and come to America? I admire the freedom here. I wish to be on my own. I wish to be independent person. I have a dream and I wish that I can do something on my own. That's the main motive I leave, left China. Because in China, you may not be able to do that. You need relations. You need to be able to make special contacts and able to talk to those people. I knew I was not able to. I wanted to do something on my own. That's why I moved to America. Was it difficult to get out of China? Yes, it is very difficult. I was granted a green card with a special uh, talent in 15 days. And then you stayed? Yes. Tell me about when you first landed in America, what was the experience like of seeing America and seeing American life compared to your life in China? Uh, <laughs> yes, it's very hard because I only have one friend here and he asked me to stay with him. He was a hotel manager in Hollywood. He has two rooms there. He shared one for me, but I was not aware what my future lies ahead of me. I only have $40 in my pocket. My, my brain is all blank. However, my friend, America is a place where you can make your dream come true. And he says, I'm learning that. You have that capability, but me, I, myself, I am not aware what. Fortunately, I was only at the age of 27, walking in the Hollywood Boulevard with a wing coat. In October, I shed my tears. I said to myself, in five years, I'm going to stand up in this land. Very fortunately, one other friend where um, he offered me a job, a post in a toy factory. I worked there for two months. I earned $1,600. Therefore, I left the motel room and moved to Alhambra. I left $800 to my friend. I was so appreciative as of today of his generosity to, to keep me and help me. Therefore, two years after I landed in America, I started a career as a portrait painter. $300 or $400 for a huge size of portrait. At least I was earning money with my own hands. I treasure that job. You were painting portraits uh, and making your own living. You must have felt completely free at that point. What came after that? Yes, afterwards, I was, I was introduced to quite a few of the well-known people. So I did portraits for uh, Cardinal Mahoney, Pete Wilson, then governor, as well as a few other congressmen in California. That was about 1993 to 94. Therefore, 
In 1993, it, even though I paint portraits, but those are sparing work, so I need to have a decent job. I found a t-shirt painting job. They pay me 70 cents for painting on one t-shirt. I could paint a hundred pieces a day. I worked so hard. I never thought I was paid for 70 to work because I knew I'm going to be paid for 70 dollars a day. And the rest of the story is that you went into business for yourself in the t-shirt business, correct? Yes, I, I was having a factory for t-shirt painting, but I knew it would not be enough and that's not my career. So I have decided that I want to do 10 works in two months. 10 paintings in two months. 10 paintings. Yes, 10 paintings. Therefore, I shut down my t-shirt factory. I started a new career. In two months, I bought with all my savings, I bought all the painting um, material, and I did 10 paintings in that two months. I asked myself, this is a, really a test on myself, if I can have a chance for myself. Future is unknown, but I need to give myself a chance. So I did. Luck knocked at my door. A man came. He took all my 10 paintings and he paid me 900 per piece. Who was that man? He is a person based in Los Angeles. Later on, he has his own jewelry shop. I went to see him. I still go to see him often. And we still record this past history and memories. I was so fond of him that I so appreciated to what he has done to me. Well, he, he launched your, your art career with, with your paintings. He gave you, gave you money for, for your 10 paintings or your nine paintings. So that was a, a wonderful thing that he did. Yes. So what happened then? After, after you sold those nine paintings, you're in the Pasadena area now. Uh, what started happening with your career? I used the money I earned from the t-shirt factory and those money, then I started with the gallery in 1994. I joined Californian Art Club as a member. I came to know Peter and Elaine. Later on, I was awarded for the award for gold medal in Californian gold medal show in both 1987 and, and uh, 1998 consecutively. What did winning those awards do for your career? It provides me a big opportunity. So many galleries, they invite me to become their members. As well as collectors begin to notice my work. In 1999, again, I was awarded Best of Show by Oil Painters America. So gradually, I think I'm on the track for my artistic career. I was so appreciative. I remember his name as F. Sari. John Asario. No, no, no John Asari. Uh, his Asari. name is Sirius, something like Sirius F. Sari. I love this artist's work. Yeah, I You started teaching workshops. At what point? I then started at 2001, established my own studio and then I started workshop as well as studio classes in Alhambra, California. One thing that you do uh, that I think is quite unique, most workshops are about drawing or painting. You put them together. You do your 10-day workshop where you start with drawing and you do an intensive drawing course and then you go into painting. Talk to me about that. In the beginning, I established this workshop for students in the good idea, I think it is, that students can start to learn drawing 
solidifying their foundation first and then begin to paint. Gradually, I come to understand from my teaching that drawing is such an important missing link that I need to understand to help the student understand how they can understand drawing by means that, that they can gradually understand how to help them in painting. And drawing is not merely a material of painting with, or drawing with charcoal or, or pencil. Instead, it is a whole package of learning. Many students approach me and ask, I've been drawing for my life and why still I cannot paint properly instead of the drawing? This is exactly a problem-solving issue for those artists that they know drawing, but they don't know how that can help the painting. So what I, I think you're saying here is that you can't really paint without the foundation of drawing. Is that correct? Theoretically, yes. But then, here is the problem. For those experienced drawers, they cannot still paint properly. Why? Uh, why? <laughs> why? <laughs> uh. I am trained in the Russian um, artistic background. Therefore, to me, the light for some people is a tool for you to find the, draw, the drawing to help you for the structure and form. However, for me, the structure and form is a basic that you have to find it in order to build up your painting. So it's a different system. So it's not, it's not based on finding the shadows first. Uh, which is oftentimes what mu much of drawing is about, is put in the shadows, block in the shadows first, and then block in the light. It's not that system. You are right. I want to find the bones first. The structure of the face. Yes, something yes. inside. I see. So you're going from the inside out. You start with the, ins the, the, the anatomy, and then you you fill out everything after the anatomy. Exactly. You want to see what's inside. You have to admit one thing. Without the light, the structure exists. Why that is darkest dark there? It is not the result of the light. It is an issue of the bone existence. And because of light, it gives the contrast and its shadow. This is a different mentality. Therefore, whether light exists or not, you are preoccupied with the conception that the bone is there. It's not because of the light, it gives you the darkest dark for that part. Do you require the students to study anatomy uh, as part of your drawing program? Yes, of course. And that's very much part of the Russian system as well, as they spend a tremendous amount of time in anatomy. Yes, of course. Uh, one question I'm always curious about is artists from the past. What artists inspire you? And if you had a chance to meet those artists, what would you ask them? Mm. Yes, that's Nikolai Feijin. Particularly in the recent years, previously, I would say I like it, but now I am distilled in my sentiment. My students to his hometown, Kazan, four times. This past May, we were there in Kazan, in Feiji Museum. In Russia? Yes. In Russia. 85 works displayed there for the pre-American era. He inspired me not on technique. He gave me a new understanding about art, about creativity, particularly in design. What would you ask him if you could meet him in person? Oh. <laughs> I wouldn't want to ask him. 
because I'm so happy already seeing his works. He's so inspiring to me, his works. And the best way to learn is to copy his works. It's so hard to copy his works, or I would say impossible to copy. That's why he is so great. In May, we arranged that we could copy in uh, the museum, and we did. I copied two works. Somehow, I felt I didn't learn that way. It's not possible for one, just after copying, you want to paint in his, in his way. That's why we made a critique. I was giving lectures there in the museum, and I explained, I asked them, why, why copying today, and what are we supposed to learn from that? I would say that his freedom from the bondage of classical understanding in design, and that so-called freedom is not random, because he's paying more attention to the rhythm and tension that one could create. Yet, there is no rule or principle that you can apply or you can find as tracks. His talent that is beyond everyone. You believe Fashion is the greatest artist I dare not say that is my critique, but I would say, yes, I agree with you, because there are so many great artists. However, I feel so much from his works. Who do you really admire as a living artist today? It's hard to say for me. So many artists, they are very strong in their own category and each one is different from their ta talent as well. However, I'm drawn more to works with souls. So, how do you read a painting? How do, when, you, when you go to a museum and you look at a painting, <clears throat> what's the most important thing to you? And how do you define how to get the soul of a painting? I think, just like when I'm teaching my students, I always tell, tell them there are four or five principles. One, I want to find some uniqueness of design. Thirdly, the temperature, warm versus cool. Fourth, the expression. Overall, orchestration and as a result, whether the rhythm or the tension or the power have been achieved or not. I am very objective in this way. Um, I'm very, very open-minded, so I'm not using my own sentiments to judge them. I try to respect every difference that one artist from others. I want to check on everyone, and then I will make a conclusion whether that work has the soul or not. Why do you paint? <laughs> It's my life. Mm, it's my life. It's like your breath. You can't live a day without it, right? Yes. How do you want to be remembered? When, when you're gone, what would you hope people say about your work? Two years ago, I left the world for a very short moment, but I came back. My heart. I had a heart attack. Oh, frightening. So I survived from that ordeal. Your question really, I would say, you read my mind. That whatever I do now for my art, as well as for my art education, I never worry whether this price may be a tag from a price tag labeled to my work. But I want my works to show something or as a legacy. Of course, I'm not that great. I will strive my best, like a painting or planner or landscape. Afterwards, people will say, that's a nice landscape work, or they will treasure it just like a trinket in the jewelry box. Same as my education. My job is to train you and all of you wanted to become instructor to other people, convey my artistic message to everyone else, then that, uh, my job is done. Like this DVD we are shooting today, 
I want them to be useful for those people who view this. Give them insta inspiration and I will be very happy. Well, I'm honored that you would spend time with me and that you would do this with us. I think people will look at this 100 or 200 years from now to be able to see how you painted. And I'm honored that you would take the time and come to us and do this with us. Thank you very much. Uh, Likewise, I'm also honored by the chance you offer to me for this opportunity to make such a DVD shooting. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that was master artist Joe Wang, and the video is called Essential Drawing Skills, and you can learn more about it at lilyartvideo.com. Remember, there's a special discount code for you in the comments section today only. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you for watching. What if you could paint like a master artist? What if you could study with one of the world's most successful Chinese masters, whose work occupies museums and some of the best art collections in the world? Now you can learn portrait painting and drawing with two exciting and all new instructional videos with master artist Joe Wang. These exclusive videos give you the rare opportunity to learn from a world-renowned master artist as he demonstrates the powerful techniques he uses to bring any subject to life. This is a drawing sketch and color sketch. Color sketch is for the purpose of the value, the temperature, warm versus cool, and also its local skin tone. In the first video, Painting Expressive Portraits, Joe Wang teaches you his method to capturing the raw emotion and humanity of your subject in oil. He'll show you how to establish value and rhythm in your composition, how to capture the unique energy and personality of your subject, the secret to using texture to add depth and emotion to your paintings, and how you can make dynamic painterly portraits that reflect the personality of the sitter, and so much more. In the second training video, Essential Drawing Skills, Jove teaches you how to draw vivid and lifelike portraits in pencil. You'll learn valuable insights about the anatomy of the face and head, how to find your perspective lines. Yes, many portrait artists don't even know the importance of perspective in drawing the face. This tip alone will change everything. How to use special tools to soften and adjust features as you move through each stage of your composition. Jove demonstrates how to use subtle expressive lines to bring facial expressions to life. How to search for movement and use straight lines to create a sense of rhythm in your work. And how to avoid the most common mistakes that both beginners and advanced artists make when drawing. For an artist, drawing is the critical foundation of everything you do. If you've always wanted to learn how to draw and paint captivating portraits that are both realistic and expressive, then these training videos were created especially for you. Painting expressive portraits and essential drawing skills with Jove Wang are now available on DVD or digital download. Order yours today. Painting Expressive Portraits and Essential Drawing Skills with Joe Wang.